Welcome to On My Way to Wealth, the podcast where busy Gen Xers can learn financial tips as they navigate life on their way to wealth. And now, please join your host, Luis Rosa. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of On My Way to Wealth. My name is Luis Rosa, and I'm your host. Today, I have the pleasure of speaking with a very good friend of mine. We're dealing in very odd times today, people being quarantined. So today, I have my very good friend, Arnold Gillo. He is the founder of Behavioral Health Consultants, and he's a licensed clinical social worker, behavioral therapist out of Las Vegas. So without further ado, Arnold Gillo, welcome, Arnold. Thank you, Luis. Thank you for having me and hosting me today. Uh, uh, I would like to uh, uh, just say I'm originally, I have an accent, I'm originally from Kenya. I've lived in the U.S. for the last 12 years, and uh, I'm a clinical social worker, a behavioral therapist, and I specialize in anxiety disorders and other psychiatric um, uh, that, uh, other psychiatric issues. Um, I got into this field because of my background in Kenya. I was a businessman and uh, a graphic designer by profession. And later on, when I relocated in the, to the U.S. in 2008, I had come, I came to the U.S. and wanted to do psychology. However, a professor of mine advised me that it will take you like almost nine to 10 years doing psychology and gave me two options, either to do a licensed marriage family therapist or social work. And I chose the social work route because um, I knew that I would be, within five years, I would, I would meet my goal. And I graduated within five years with a master's and moved to Las Vegas where I started uh, to work. I've done therapy for the last six years. And uh, I love it. And um, one of the things I enjoy is working with people. Um, I I've seen dark. I've, I've gone through a dark past in the in my life, and um, I lost my dad when I was eighteen. And during oh, wow. that time, I relied on people really to help me face life. And so I felt like the best way to do uh, the best way to serve humanity is to also give. A, 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 part of my experience and analytical skills and so, um, uh, solutions that come from therapeutic backgrounds to help them deal with their situations. Got it. That is awesome. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing that. So, yeah, yeah you're using your experiences and, and the fact that you were helped yourself to then see, well, how can I have more impact on other people? Because you saw the benefit that it had for you. That's, that's amazing. Thank mm-hmm. you for sharing that. So, you know, right now, due to coronavirus, we have all this uncertainty I'm sure you've seen a lot of people with more anxieties coming about. And I wanted to talk about specifically about things that people are dealing with and and with a focus on emotional spending, because I know a lot of people might be working from home where they weren't used to that before. Maybe they're bored or anxious, and a lot of them might have some triggers to then like overspend as a result. So I wanted to kind of like dive in. So uh, can you tell our audience just uh, what is your definition of emotional spending? Emotional spending occurs when you buy something you don't need. And in some cases, you don't even really want. It's like the act of buying things with the motivation to make you feel better. Um, you know, most of the time, whenever we engage in emotional spending, it's because we are wanting, you know, a, a validation, wanting to feel better about ourselves. And the problem with that is that, you know, emotional spending leads us to a a short-term solution. So I say, let's say, for example, I work 13 hour days. And there are times that are really, really hard at times when you see almost like, like, you know, when I see eight to 10 clients in a day, and then I'm going home and out of the eight to 10 clients in a day that those who are really facing hard economic times, they are facing um, other psychiatric and emotional issues, mm-hmm. relationship issues, and they're in a state of heightened anxiety, uh, uh, you know, emotional state where they are really, really not feeling good about themselves. And one, it's so easy to be like, how can I feel better today? And the best thing is to reward myself, for example, maybe buy yourself an expensive meal. You know you have your meal prepared for the week, but just because of how you feel, you are going to just decide, okay, I'm going to get Uber Eats, DoorDash, or any other thing. Right. Or 
go to a go to a store in the evening as you drive home and decide I'm going to buy you know a, a bottle of wine and a bowl of cheese, and those things make you feel better at the moment. However, you'll find that if you talk to many people, it's like after a short while, you know, they get the dopamine, the serotonin, uh, and they feel really good. But at the same time, after a few hours, they are now going down, starting to regret. They have spent money they have not budgeted for. They have spent money that ought to have been used for something else. Or they have even spent money that they don't have because now they use the credit. Right. And, and you find that because of that cycle, uh, 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 people, I mean, it's something that you'll find that so many people have engaged in emotional spending and continue to engage in emotional spending, which sometimes even leads to, you know, perpetual debt. Right. Because at every time they're recovering, because of they go through various emotional uh, 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 states, which ranges from, you know, issues that pertain to boredom, you know, and then constantly advertisements are coming our way. I don't know on a weekly basis how many credit card or credit card offers the letters that come you've been pre-approved so many have come my way and they're so tempting and especially during this time i'm 100 sure that almost over 90 percent of our population are engaging in emotional spending and opening up uh, credit cards that they really do not know how they're going to pay back and just being home and seeing all the advertisements and even the internet has made it so easy for us to emotionally spend. So long as I have all my details in various websites like Amazon, um, uh, certain shops like, you know, uh, be it Target, be it Walmart, any of the major stores that have online, Macy's, they have sale and, they, you know, that pressure, social pressure and anxiety of you click into an item and you see they tell you only two left. And you just feel like, oh, I need to buy it right now, even though you don't need it. And one of the things I can tell the audience is just check even your house. How many things have you bought that still have the labels and you haven't even worn them <laughs> and used them for some time? And that is one of the, one of the, one of the results of emotional spending. It wow. gives you the joy and the happiness for the now, but the end result is that look at it deeply, you didn't need it. Got it. So that's similar to how some other people use a different outlet, right? Some people eat, some people drink, some people do drugs, some people just shop. Yes. Is that right? Yeah. Wow. So, And, and, and when you're talking of emotional spending, we are, we are not even talking of, about, about a, a shopping addiction or retail therapy or a compulsive buying, which are, are, as, are a result of you know, psychiatric disorders. Mm. This is just because of prevailing circumstances, emotional state at that time, and we want to just make ourselves feel good, we find ourselves very impulsive and buying, and we feel good, but later on we are regretting and we are very remorseful because of those decisions. Got it. And I would imagine that it becomes some sort of negative cycle because then when, when you come down from feeling good and then you're feeling down because of what you did, I would imagine then some people just shop again just to... Yes, they will shop again because let's say I shopped yesterday and got everything I wanted. Um, for example, uh, 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 I don't, let's say for example, an individual doesn't feel bad or I, I, doesn't feel good, sorry, doesn't feel good about themselves. So mm -hmm. instead of me going to work out, committing to a workout regime for three to six months to nine months, the best is to go shopping for clothes. And I buy these new clothes, I wear them, I feel good for the week. Then after some time, the cycle is around, I still feel bad about myself and therefore I need something else to feel good. And there is where you find that we make, it could be either small or big financial decisions as we emotionally spend on the next thing that will give us that high. And Got that... It you know, that feel good, more, uh, 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 that feel good uh, 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 status where it's like, I want to feel good about myself. Got it. Wow. And, it's, and, and it, it, it's not that, it's not like uh, uh, buying things to make ourselves feel good is bad. But when we are doing it at the expense of getting into debt, not even maybe paying off some of our credit cards, then it becomes a problem. Mm. 
Yeah, that is a very good point. I'm glad you bring that up. Yeah, so uh, so listeners out there, it's not like it's a bad thing necessarily, but it could be a bad thing if it gets out of control, especially if you don't have the resources for it. You know, if you're going on credit for it and, and then it just makes the problem worse because once you get that bill, you're going to feel worse and, and just continue the cycle. So Arnold, can you tell us a little bit about how the current situation, I know a lot of people are under quarantine orders, so they're not used to being home all day. A lot of them are parenting their kids at the same time with they're trying to do a full-time job and, and do at-home schooling and uh, husbands and wives are now all day together. I would imagine that that has had some sort of impact in, in that in relation to a whole bunch of problems, including emotional spending, right? Yes. But, and you're right in what you're saying in that uh, we have never been in this situation before where you find that both husband and wives or partners or uh, the kids being at home and everybody's at home. It's really, really a stressful situation. One is uh, uh, what's driving <clears throat> The current spending, the emotional spending is just the anxiety, the social anxiety or, and the fear of the unknown. Uh, for example, you remember when this started uh, a while back, uh, a few weeks ago, and, you know, people rushed to buy, you know, supplies. And they bought them in bulk, forgetting that children and other people in, the home, in their homes do not have the full understanding of what emergency supplies needs. Right. And therefore, when we are home and the kids are home, the tendency of us emotionally eating into the supplies which we bought for, you know, to last a number of weeks, mm. thinking that this issue would just end immediately. Now we are looking at, you know, end of April. Some of our, some uh, some states are talking of June. Some states are talking of if we want to really, really recover and be healthy as an economy and as a country, we are looking at August. And currently, most of the supplies that people bought have really gone out, apart from, let's say, things like maybe tissue paper and paper towels and soap. Majority of the food items that were bought in bulk have been exhausted, uh, have been exhausted uh, because... Uh, 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 the kids are there and they play video games and they're emotionally eating. They're not used to just being in one environment, in, in an isolated environment. Right. And that means that we have to replenish again and again and again on the supplies that are running out. Wow. In the meantime, there are many families also who, uh, 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 the, 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 the sole providers and breadwinners have been laid off. And at this moment, some have even uh, uh, started digging into their 401k. Um, mm -hmm. Some are, you know, refinancing. And as they refinance their homes, the chunk of money that is coming in, they are using it for, you know, surviving at the moment, you know, right. meeting their, their basic needs. But in the process, they feel bad about everything. They feel unappreciated. My employer let me go. Um, uh, we have we have been temporarily temporarily been been laid off. What can make me feel better is to you know buy something. Right. And and the adverts, the adverts are bombarding us all over. Especially if you look at uh, you know the adverts on Instagram, it's so easy to just buy, and and you feel good that you have this thing. And many people are also bored. And you can imagine the conversation that people have in. Um, uh, with their friends, there is a sale. Of course, retail, I've seen even car, uh, uh, car dealerships at this moment advertising for people to buy vehicles, new vehicles. And I'm like, we are in uncertain times. Who wants to really buy a $40,000 vehicle where you really do not know how the economy is going to go and how even if you will be having your job? Yeah, I saw ads for a car that uh, they say, oh, no payments till June, you know, yes, <laughs> don't worry no, about it. Yes, they're telling you 90 days until your first payment. And it looks so, it, it's so enticing. And believe me or not, uh, uh, believe you or not, there are many people who are actually falling into that trap of, of spending. Other things are uh, relationship issues because uh, partners are now together for longer hours and they're beginning to notice even more of their flaws and they feel unappreciated. And the best way to, to reward themselves is to buy something off the, off the internet. Mm -hmm. 
if I can buy that th- 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 that pair of shoes, that leather jacket, and 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 oh, those microphones. If I can buy, you know, those nice Beats headphones. And as we do that, we are digging in, into our savings. We are digging into our finances, and 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 it's emotional buying. I mean, we feel good that we have those nice headsets. We have good video games. We have good phones and uh, the things that are on sale currently, you know, they're good deals. But do we really need them? No. Right. Yeah. yeah, and you're so right. We're we're so constantly bombarded by these things. Uh, you make up a great point. Where, like, when you look at certain of the major places where you can shop online, there they make it like, oh, only two items left, right? Yes. And it's yeah. always that hurry, right? Hurry up and one one click buy now. If you have your credit card already saved you can literally buy something maybe with a click or two at most, right? Just like yes, buy it's now. Very, <laughs> it's very, very easy. I mean, it's just, it's, it's like exposure to temptation. We have more time at home now because uh, 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 we are no longer having, you know, we have the time that we drive to work. That's we're talking for some people, 30 to 40 minutes commute that now they can check things online on their phones. Um, you know, so the, the availability of time is making us spend more boredom, advertisement, uh, uh, relational disturbances, you know, as we have talked of, you know, mm-hmm. differences of opinion that arise between couples, partners, family mm-hmm. members. <clears throat> and since they feel at that particular time that they don't feel good about themselves and the decisions they've made, the best thing to, you know, the short-term uh, uh, goal of making themselves feel better is buying something new. And Got you it. see, when they buy it, they have something to talk about uh, for the next few days before that high goes low again. Got it. Yeah, so this problem has definitely been intensified now with relationship issues, kids at home, mm-hmm. some people being laid off, all these different factors and having all the time as well. Mm-hmm. So uh, do you have any suggestions, like uh, some of the things that people can do maybe to prevent themselves from emotionally spending or maybe to help curtail some of that behavior? Yeah, there, there, there are a number of things that people can do. Uh, 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 can do. Uh, first of all is to recognize that you are spending, uh, uh, you, you are emotionally spending, in that the first question you ask yourself is, do I need, uh, in every purchase I've made, do I need that thing to make myself feel better or it's something that I've been planning and it is budgeted for? The moment we feel that we are buying it just to make ourselves feel better, remember it's not bad. We can reward ourselves anytime we want, but we have to recognize if it is emotional spending or we are spending as budgeted and as we had set, let's say, for example, our 2020 year goals. If it is if it falls in line with that, that's fine. And so, but if it is emotional spending, we have to first recognize it and we have to start having. Uh, 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 we, we start uh, uh, having important tools on how to deal with it and curb that type of spending. Another thing is we need to make one financial decision at a time. When people are faced with multiple back-to-back decisions, it tests their willpower. And that willpower sometimes wear, wears off. And when it wears off, then you just find yourself doing it. It's just like a diet. Whenever we, ha- we put ourselves on a diet, we have the willpower to go 90 days. Then after the 90 days, then we don't follow it because we have achieved our goals sometimes. Mm-hmm. And we now go back to normal. And that's where the rubber meets the road. And we fail and get back to the position where we are, or even more, much more fatter than we were before. And, and added much more weight. It's just like the more we spend emotionally, then we get into debt. And sometimes we make, uh, you know, make good financial decisions we curb our spending, we pay off debt. And since we know now we are off, we start spending again carelessly without planning or without budgeting. So the, another advice is make one financial decision at a time. Space out your financial decisions instead of making too many uh, de- uh, financial decisions that overwhelm you at once. Yeah, that is such a good point. I like how you make the analogy between dieting and, and this issue with spending, because it's so true. Sometimes I think when we see progress, we can easily let our guard down. Mm-hmm. So it's a lot easier to just do things 
without the emotional factor in it. So one of the things my wife and I do is, for example, with Amazon, it's very easy to shop online with your app. It's like one click buy and all that. So what we currently do as a practice is, unless it's something that we have a need for that we know for like paper towels, things like that, right? We add the item to the shopping cart, but we do not complete the purchase and then basically sleep on it. And the next day, then we go back to the shopping cart and look at the items we've placed there and see if we actually do need it. And if we do, then we complete the purchase. Just as a a method of removing the emotional aspect from that purchase, just in case it is in fact an impulse buy. So we just kind of developed that habit. Yeah, that's another, a good way of coping with it. Yeah, another thing I tell my clients too that I do this myself. Sometimes it's tedious, but I unsubscribe from a lot of emails that solicit me because sometimes you log into something. You might have made a purchase one time from a company, and now they just keep bombarding you with new sales. And like you said, it's like, oh, you know, uh, you got to act before midnight tonight. There's always some sort of urgency that you they develop that sense of scarcity, right? So you need to buy now. So I unsubscribe from a lot of emails from different companies. The third thing I did too, I went to optoutprescreen.com and I'll be sure to put that in the resources. And basically you remove yourself because I know you mentioned this, all these pre-approved offers that you didn't apply for that just come in the mail, the 0% APR balance transfer and all these like different offers you get in the mail. You pre-approve for this loan, right? It's very easy to just say, yes, oh, wow, I've been pre-approved. All you got to do is just... Say yes, basically, right? So they make it super easy. So mm-hmm. I opted out. So optoutprescreen.com, you enter your information. They're supposed to stop sending you those pre-approved uh, offers, which I've seen a huge decrease in my mail right now because I no longer get as many as, as I used to get. Which is, so something to keep in mind. And uh, another thing is having an accountability partner. In this case, is my wife for me. So I make sure that, I kind of like consult if it's something that I, even it could be anything like a, a coat or anything. But like, hey, what do you think about this jacket? You know, sometimes you go, hey, you know what? But you already have another one that's similar in the closet. And, you know, it's like you mentioned, sometimes we have stuff that still has the tags on it. You yeah. know, that's happened to me. I'm like, you know what? You're right. <laughs> uh, you know, and you don't feel as good at the moment. Like, man, I really wanted to order that. But you probably didn't need it. Right. So, <laughs> um, yeah. So I appreciate you bringing all these things to, to, you know, to basically sharing with us some of the things that we can do to cope and, and some of the triggers as well. Um, are there any resources that you would like to share with the audience that could also help the one to read further into it or anything like that? Yeah. I, 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 um, there's a, an article on the APA.org help center uh, called Willpower Finances. Okay. Uh, I will send you their links. Uh, there's also Psychology Today, and there was um, an article on what is behavioral economics and how, you know, it, it talks a little bit of learned behavior that sometimes we spend, we, we spend based on our backgrounds and how we were brought up. And you find that sometimes, you know, one of the, one of the worst ways to spend and, and one of the worst reasons to give for spending is, Arnold, why did you buy that phone? It's because I can't. And, okay. And, 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 and it, that ought not to be, uh, um, not be not to be a part of a spending routine where we just buy things and spend because we can, but we really need to be cognitively aware that sometimes we're emotionally spending and, and, and we need sometimes support and we need to avoid temptation, staying away from the mall and just as you say, I'm subscribing from from advertisements or pre-approved offers in sales that come all the time on our mail. Got it. Okay, awesome. So what I'll do is I'll be sure to share those resources. For those listening, this is episode 14. So just go to onmywaytowealth.com and just find episode 14. And I'll have in the show notes the resources that Arnold's mentioning. Um, Arnold, thank you so much for taking your time to be with us. I know that this particular time of year, you're probably super busy because of what's going on. So I appreciate you taking time to speak with us today. Mm-hmm. Um, before you leave, uh, the two things I wanted to ask you. Number one is, what is something that you know now that you wish you would have known earlier that you'd like to share with us? One is about my spending habits. Um, in the last, in the last, I think uh, four years. 
I've usually operated like without a proper streamlined budget. And I've seen how uh, resources, financial resources are going to waste. In, 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 it means that um, I've not been very prudent. I wish that I would have stuck um, with my with a budget that actually I remember you're the one who assisted me draw out draw it out. <laughs> if I start with it, then I would I would not be in this position where I am currently. But I think I would really I've I've looked at it and I see that I would have really made much more advance in terms of investing the money that is saved into other things that are much more. Got know. it. Yeah. Okay, so just yeah. having that structure. Yeah, because when you have that budget, uh, I think it, it removes a lot of the emotion out of it because everything's structured. You know, people hear the word budget, it's like you were saying, they think of restriction, like diet. Mm -hmm. But in reality, if you look at corporations and governments, they run on a budget and some of them are multi-million dollar budgets, right? Yeah. So you don't have to feel restricted when you're on a budget. You could just allocate everything just give every dollar that comes in a destination. Some of it is going to go to pay your bills. Some of them will go towards vacation funding. Some of them towards your own personal spending, et cetera. So it's just a matter of saying, you know what, I'm going to automate everything. So as soon as it comes in, this is where the money goes. And this is how much I have to spend on myself. So you don't have to feel restricted. But at the same time, you're giving yourself some sort of limit by choice, right? Because you're choosing to spend it on something else, right? Because uh, the more you spend here, then the less you're going to have available for something else. So you, you kind of make that choice depending on your lifestyle. So thank you for sharing that. And um, one more thing is just uh, where can people find you online? If you are on any social media, any websites you'd like to share with us? I'm not very much active on social media, but you can find me on, uh, I have a, a website that will be coming, uh, will be launched really soon, www.bureauhealthconsultantsnevada.com. Um, uh, you can also find me on LinkedIn. I do occasional posts and uh, on psychology today. Okay. So Arno Gillo, G I L L O, and is behavioral health consultants Nevada.com. Yes. That'll be launching soon. And also on, you have a profile on the American, what is Psychological Association? Psychology, psychology Association? today. Psych okay. Psychology today. Got it. So I'll be sure to put all those links on episode 14 show notes as well. Thank you so much, Arnold. I really appreciate you taking the time out to be with us today. Thank and, you so uh, much. Yeah, this is really helpful information that I know people will definitely benefit from hearing. So thank you all. Uh, it's been great having you. I look forward to seeing you all in the next episode. If you have any questions, feel free to shoot me an email at Luis at onmywaytowealth.com. If there's anybody that you'd like for me to interview or any topic you'd like to see in the next episode, send me an email. And just a quick disclaimer, this is for informational purposes only. Behavioral health consultants, retirement wealth advisors, and build a better financial future are not affiliated. So be sure to consult with your own medical team, your own attorneys, your own financial planners for any decision that you need to make that's going to benefit you. Thank you. We'll see you in the next episode. Thank you for listening to On My Way to Wealth. If you have any questions, we'd love to hear from you. Send Luis an email at luis at onmywaytowealth.com. To read the show notes and the blog, please visit www.onmywaytowealth.com. Luis Rosa is an investment advisor representative of Retirement Wealth Advisors, Inc., an SEC registered investment advisor. Build a Better Financial Future and Retirement Wealth Advisors are not affiliated. Exposure to ideas and financial vehicles discussed should not be considered investment advice or recommendation to buy or sell any financial vehicle. This information should not be considered tax or legal advice. Individuals should consult with the professional specializing in the fields of tax, legal, accounting, or investments regarding the applicability of this information for their situation. Past performance is not a guarantee of future results. Investments will fluctuate and when redeemed, may be worth more or less than when originally invested.